today I am in the Flowerdale Forest which is a remote part which sits directly behind Torridon to the north and there's two fantastic mountains that I'm going to be doing over the weekend here on my left here is Benanoin and to my right is Bushven and these two mountains can be clearly seen when you're in Torridon and I've always wanted to I've always wanted to do these so finally I am here after years of wanting to do them it's not too bad a day, it's a little bit cloudy but there's breaks and there's some sunny spells as well so this is me finished on this path I'm now going to strike towards the hill and start heading up I don't know how good the camera can pick up this big massive Torridonian sandstone slab behind me but what I'll do is I'll go and put myself over there just to give you perspective Well folks it has just gone 3 o'clock I'm still making my way towards Benanoin. The ridge itself is about three kilometers long. Um, don't get me wrong, once you're on the ridge, it's fine. It's mostly grassy with dotted boulders all around. But uh, just thinking to get over to Boschvin, sorry, Bushvin, from here. I mean, I've got enough daylight, but I'll knock my pan in. So I might camp on Benanoin. I'm not sure yet. I'll see how long it takes to get up here first. There it is folks, there's a the summit, boom. Well folks, that is me on the summit of Benanoin, which translates to peak of the bird. And I tell you what, I could do with a pair of wings at the moment because my legs are just not firing all cylinders today. I really want to get over to Bushven, but it's just gone four o'clock. I could do it in, I reckon, four to five hours. Probably four. That would take me to eight o'clock, but I'm going to knock my pan in. So I'm tempted to camp on the ridge here. It's a little bit narrow here. There was a few pitches just before the summit. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it down to the nose. I could actually go down this way, but uh, when I asked the guy who came up that way, I said, what's it like? And his words were, steep as <laughs> So given that I'm on my own, I think it'd be sensible just to backtrack down the ridge and then go up the normal route rather than heading down this with a, a camping pack. Let's have a look. Is this just going to disappear from under my feet? <laughs> oh no, it keeps going. Yeah, you know what? It doesn't look that bad. You could get down to there. It's then what's sort of beyond that. Looking on the map, it is really steep. I do really fancy just pitching here, just off the summit a little bit. It's a bit more sheltered from that cold wind. And I've got a fantastic view, honestly. It's cracking. Got some real big household names here that you'll know. Over to my left, we've got Sleoch. Kevin and I camped on that one a few years back. Here in front of me, I've got the mighty massive of Ben A. Then I've got Leaha. Then I've got Ben Gerag, which me and Kevin camped on as well. Then over to the haze there, in front of me, I've got Ben Alligan. Me and Stevie camped here, I think it was 2016, pre-YouTube days. And then tomorrow's objective, Bushven. So yeah, super boss. Let's find a pitch. 
I really can't make my mind up. I went two mines, it's still early. Sunset is bang on 10 o'clock and even then you're still going to get daylight. And I just know I've got enough time in the bank. Yeah, I'm not quite firing all cylinders, but you know what? I've got a sawing loaf. So I've got some nice squidgy energy. I'll just nurse that across. And I get up to the summit, set up the tent, get dinner on. Happy days. So I'm going to push on. That is the plan. There is a, there's a second option, it wouldn't be as fun but the, one of the guys was telling me he slept in the boathouse yesterday just down at the loch so I could do that and then it would set me up nicely in the morning but I'd rather have a high camp than sleeping in a boathouse but that option is there so uh, yeah that's quarter past four I'm going to go for it, let's go, let's do this Whoa. Was tough but that is half five now so four and a half hours daylight whoosh, to get up that ridge and up to the summit definitely doable definitely Woo. Mm. I needed that just to get a different taste other than water. Whew. Right, I'm going to refuel and I'm going to make a, an attempt at this. If I get going in the next 10 15 minutes, that's fine. A nice rebreather. I can see that boathouse that uh, the boy slept in, but uh, it'd be nice by the lock, but a summit camp is far more appealing, I'm sure you agree. So uh, I'm going to plod on. It's going to be a 10 o'clock dinner though. <laughs> but, uh, I'll have a look at the map, get roughly an idea of how many kilometres it is. I reckon four, maybe five. Well, I've had a look at the map and I reckon it's about three kilometres and 480 metres of ascent. So that's a good two hours, maybe two and a half hours shift in it. So yeah, let's do this. But first I've got a little river crossing. There's obviously some sort of bridge back in the day that is uh, obviously long gone now. That's where we're headed. Weird old bridges, I think they've like banked up with stones. Some of them are underwater but it was easy enough. Anyways, I might not do much filming between here and the summit because uh, I just want to get, get up there and get pitched and then I can chill out and then chat to you guys. Whew. So uh, I'll speak to you later on guys. Beep, 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 beep. News update folks. Whew. I'm just about to pick up the spur which leads up to the summit. I reckon I'm about halfway there. In other news, I've had a message from my mum on the Zolio app and she's like, uh, you're in the middle of nowhere Robin. I said, well, no shit Sherlock, she's been looking at the Google Maps, zooming in and then realising there's nothing there. She obviously doesn't watch my channel. But then the next question was like, oh you're on your own, which I am obviously. I don't like you on your own. Well, can't always have company unfortunately. So, uh, lesson learned, do not add your mum to your Zolio app because she'll pester you. My missus, she's just happy that I've got the location share on so she can follow my progress see that I'm still alive and still moving that's all you really need I think it just lets me get on it I can mute the sounds on this so I don't get interrupted by any mum messages coming in <laughs> but she means well 7 o'clock folks and this is the current scenes my summit is on this one here and my route goes at the gap and then up to the summit there. I should be up there before 8 o'clock, easy. Here we go folks. 
Ja, de bjelk. Ah, nice. Oof. Not bad, not bad. Nice we scramble up that one. However, my summit is up here. Ten minutes away after that. Let's go, let's go. Bush vein! Hurrah! Get in! Yes folks, we've done it, we're here. And wow, the views are stunning. Now, Bushven translates to the Wizard's Mountain and I would say it's pretty magic. Whew. Yes, I'll show you. Uh, I just want to get pitched first. Bit of squidgy underfoot, I don't know if there's been a lot of rain in the run-up to this good weather, but it uh, doesn't matter. I'll find somewhere a little bit more drained. Yo folks, that is me pretty much set up. I've got my tried and tested sleep system, got my good old decathlon pillow, love this thing, super comfortable, £17 that cost. Got my Xped Cinema HLM, that's my go to for free season, really like that, super comfortable. And I've got my usual Alightent Equipment Enigma quilt, which is the one that goes down to minus six. Uh, this is one of my favourite items of gear as well. So this is pretty much up with me every trip I go out with winter. I just noticed the, the inner is all saggy. I was like, what's going on here? And it's the little mitten hooks inside. They've came away and they're a bit of a pain to get back in once you have pitched. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, see what I mean? Little mitten hooks at the back, in the middle and one in the corners. That's a pain to get back in by the way, especially once you've pitched. Well, it's five past ten at night, the sun is set and it's looking alright actually. It's a wee bit cloudy and the, the clouds are shrouding some of the tops, but yeah, I'm not complaining. And I tell you what, given how big a shift I had earlier today, plus a four hour drive, if the wind stays down, I will get a good sleep tonight. So that is good. If you're in Gearlock, whether it's doing the NC500 or you're up here for a bit of hill walking or a weekend away, there's a plane crash site that's really worth visiting. It's quite poignant and it's quite a sombre place. But basically what happened is after the war, I think it was June 1945, a Liberator plane with nine crew and six passengers, or they'll all be around. But anyway, it was a misty day apparently and it was meant to fly it left from Presswick and it was meant to fly over Stornoway but it came over mainland Scotland and it clipped Sleok just over there and then it struggled, that damaged the plane and uh, it missed these mountains that were on at the moment I believe and then it came to land um, near Gearlock not too far away from here to be honest and all the crew and passengers lost their lives so I think, I think it was 15 in total and there's a memorial there and it's really worth a visit because there's a big engine with the propeller that sticks out the water <laughs> it's, it's a bit surreal and it is quite a, a somber place but it's definitely worth a visit well folks just before going to bed i'm going to treat myself to a little horlicks this is my new ritual now honestly since introducing a horlicks before going to bed in a mug shot for part of my dinner i don't wake up cold now so it must have been i just wasn't quite putting enough calories into myself so uh, this is definitely making a difference. And this just sends you right to sleep. That's good. 
That's really good. <laughs> the simple things when you're camping. Oh, good morning, campers. Well, that was an excellent sleep. Winds have stayed light throughout the night, barely nothing at all. Temperature, it got down to three degrees in the tent. There was a little bit of frost when I walked around, just tightened everything up last night. I noticed there was some frost, so it was a pretty cold one, given it's almost June. But uh, what's the time? It is 10 to 6, so I'm thinking about getting up, getting something to eat and get packed up and let's see what it looks like outside. <laughs> Ah, I thought as much. No sexy tent reveals. <laughs> right, my mind's made up. If it's like that by the time I go, it's going to be the quick way down. I think this has to be my least favourite part of wild camping. I don't mind so much the packing up. It's just the last bit of dropping a wet tent, uh, particularly when it's cold, it's just not much fun. <laughs> but, uh, them's the brakes. Lovely. When I was up on Ben Annoying yesterday, I was chatting to that guy and he was saying that he slept in here the night before last doing these two hills. So I'm going to go and have a look and see actually how habitable it is. It looks pretty watertight to be fair. So let's have a goosey. Actually not too bad. You can probably see the camera, there's two boats here. And I think that guy must have just slept here. It's concrete, but if you've got your roll mat, you'll be fine. Aye. Any port in a storm? Well, it's gone half past eight now. My summit just behind me there is still in the clag, so I think I made the right decision just to be off a little bit earlier rather than doing the full circuit. And this will get me home a good two, three hours earlier, so that is a Brucey bonus. But, anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. So, if you've watched this far, thank you very much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.